those of you who are viewing this, uh, yes, as Angela said, I'm Albert William. I'm a lecturer in MAS and I have taken uh, students to Greece uh, for five years. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't go this year. But I wanted to uh, just basically go over what study abroad is generally. Uh, so study abroad is a program throughout the IU system that allows you to study in a different country, inter internationally, anywhere from a week to basically a year and get credit for it. Uh, a lot of the programs run over spring break. They usually have some sort of a class component and then uh, you go somewhere for spring break. Um, most of the programs are done in the summer, which is when ours is done. So it's summer one class and it's a three credit hour class yeah, I'll talk a little bit more about the class here in a minute. But uh, there, I think there's about 70 programs all together through IUPY Study Abroad that can take you all over the world for different, uh, different things. Some of them are very specific to certain schools like the medical school, the dental school have specific programs that wouldn't apply to you. But there's other programs through like Heron and engineering, things like that that will allow you to go all kinds of places. Our particular program goes to Paros, Greece, which I'll give you a little bit of background on that here in a minute. And uh, we accept students from any school. I would say by and large, most of the students that go with us come from informatics and uh, or uh, media arts and science. So let me uh, share my screen with you. And I have a PowerPoint presentation here that uh, I can show you a few things just to kind of give you an overview of our program real quick. And um, so this is kind of uh, what I would use to show some of my students what you need to know before you go. So our program is called um, Documenting the Historical and Ar Cultural Artifacts on Paros, Greece. Um, this is a main view of the small town that we live in. Uh, while we're there. And you can see actually my background, this picture was taken from right over here um, in here. So looking out that way, this is typically what Greece looks like when we're there. It's very sunny. Uh, it's nice and warm. Everything is painted white and blue and it's, it's very picturesque. Um, so we go in uh, summer session one. Again, this would have been for this year, but we didn't go because of the pandemic. Uh, the class is N415, N515. So N415 for undergraduates. And uh, let's see if I can get rid of those notes. There we go. Uh, this is for undergraduates, the N415. The N515 is for graduates. It's a three credit hour class. We are in Greece for just over three weeks, for usually for 22 days. It's a service learning project. So for uh, the RISE initiative, which I'm not sure if they're getting rid of that or, or what, I've heard that they're changing this, but it gives you two designations in RISE, international and service learning, because we have a true service learning course that we teach. We meet every day to investigate uh, things, explore and research. We interact with the locals and we take lots of field trips. What we do there is to create uh, documentaries. So just to let you know, is where is Paros? It's about 100 miles southeast of Athens in the Aegean Sea. It's part of the Cycladic Islands. Um, it's about 75 square miles. So really, to, you can drive around the entire island in about two hours. I always say that the entire island, the size of it is probably about what is inside of 465 uh, in Indianapolis, if you're familiar with that. Uh, it's been inhabited since about 4000 BC. So there's a long, long history of people that have lived there. These are some pictures. Um, this is the airport here um, where most of the students come in. We recommend that you fly there. You can take a ferry to get there, but uh, our recommendation is that you fly there and then take the ferry back. Um, they're both unique experiences. We stay in the town of Parakia. It's the main town on Paros. It's kind of the, um, the capital, if you will. There's about 5,000 residents. 
You notice down here uh, is that there's a small red circle. This is where we stay. This is the, the um, Villa Caterina. And um, so, you know, to walk from here over to here is a 10 minute walk. It's really um, about the size of campus. You can get around very easily. A lot of the residents speak English there. It's super friendly. Uh, it's just gorgeous um, seaside here. And then when you go back this way, there's big hills and mountains back there as well. What we do there is we, we document the culture and history in a number of ways. Mainly we make videos, um, documentaries. We complement those videos with 3D, with uh, VR, with motion graphics, uh, of course, audio. Uh, we do all kinds of things. Some of the documentaries we've we created are the, on animal shelters, uh, the cave, different uh, recycling and sustainability projects historic photographs, uh, the eco park there, farming and archaeology or um, agriculture there. We've done a number of archaeological sites and we have worked with the archaeologists on the island as, as well. There's a lot to document. There's uh, 11 recognized cultural sites there and uh, there's a lot more significant topics. And then one thing we do too is just international service learning is that we have uh, a public show on the last day that we're there and we invite everybody in the public to come to the um, the conference hall there in town and show our movies and it's always a lot of fun to meet lots of people and uh, to see their reaction to our work. Both of the pictures that you see here this was uh, from I think the second year that we went this was Faye Ji and she's doing some video there uh, and this was this won one of the IUPUI study abroad photo contests as did this one down here too. And this was us photographing uh, one of the historic lighthouses up here uh, at sunset. And this was a fantastic day. But this, yeah, both of these won photo contests that students took and entered them into the study abroad uh, photo contest. So um, who do we need to do this? Well, we, we take students of all different skill sets. Uh, we like to have videographers and editors, uh, sound people, 3D modelers, certainly storytellers, script writers, journalists, graphic artists, photographers. We take students of all different sorts of skill sets. And if you aren't a videographer, we'll train you to be a videographer. Part of the class is to get people up to speed on this. We've taken people from th uh, schools like School of Nursing, uh, things like that, and they have learned an incredible amount. So don't think that you can't go just because you're not in one of these areas. I mean, even if you're a programmer or something, you're gonna learn a lot and you're gonna work as a team uh, while we're there. We stay in this beautiful little place called the Villa Caterina. It's uh, owned by a, a really friendly family. They, um, I mean, we're really good friends with them. They own a restaurant near here and they have incredible food. Anybody that has ever been there um, loves the food, loves this place. So this is the, the outside of where we stay. This is uh, from looking from this balcony over, they have a nice pool. They have a little um, area back here where we can cook and, and eat together. Uh, and it's just really nice. And it's family owned. Um, and it's a, it's a, they're super people, so really nice place. So this is, this is what it looks like inside of it. This is uh, my colleague, Thomas, who's the co-director, cooking some food. Um, somebody here relaxing back by the pool. This is some of, the, um, some of the food that comes from their family restaurant. So I, I am salivating just looking at it now. So, um, so basically how do you get to go well we like for students to have finished their sophomore year and that's not really um, the school of informatics criteria that's kind of the university's criteria so you can apply uh, during your sophomore year we've taken plenty of students that are sophomores there there is a, an application process through study abroad called i abroad which i'll show you how to get to that typically our Applications open around Thanksgiving and then they close about the first or second week of spring semester. So in January, um, it's all online. All you need to really do is have a recommendation letter from a faculty member and then also a personal statement. 
and then a number of other, other things too, like a passport. And there's a bunch of stuff online you have to go through as far as releasing your transcript and all those sorts of sorts of things. And then generally, everybody knows by February 1st if you're going or not. We generally take about 10 to 15 students. Our goal is 10 students a semester. We've taken a couple uh, a couple of programs that have gone with eight or nine, and we've taken a couple of programs that have gone with 15. So our optimal number is about 11 or 12 students, uh, and we take the best 11 or 12 students that we can find uh, that have high GPAs, that have good recommendation letters from people and um, that are gonna fit into our program as, as good as possible. These are the costs. So these costs will change, but to go uh, is about $4,700 right now, which is a lot of money, uh, but you can see this includes everything. And right now, uh, airfare is, um, you know, we're not sure where that's going to be based on things. But last year, uh, we put the airfare at $1,300. And most people got over there for about 1000 So uh, these last two numbers are discretionary numbers. And this one is like, how much would you actually spend going over there, you know, on extra stuff like food. So if you budgeted to this amount, you would have more than enough money to go. Um, some programs that you see, they don't include certain things. Uh, their overall costs may look a lot less, but we've tried to be completely transparent and show you exactly what's going to cost. As incoming freshmen, if you start thinking about study abroad, whether it's this program or some other program, and you start looking at the costs that you need to go on it, um, then you can start saving and uh, you should be able to save up enough money fairly easily to go on a trip like this. So there are uh, scholarships available. There's one available through informatics. Uh, it's for MAS students. It's called the Sam Hale Scholarship that usually is available to two students every year. There are also lots of scholarships available through the study abroad office, which is called the International Experience Scholarship. And you don't need to be accepted into a program to apply to these. There's two rounds of, of awards. There's one in the fall and there's one in the spring. Um, and so you can apply to these at any point and get money there's also, you can also uh, get money through financial aid. And I've had other students do things like GoFund campaigns, Rotary Clubs, churches. Uh, there's people who have done all kinds of things to get money to go on these. If you're in the Honors College, you can uh, get a stipend to go as well. And so that's really something to consider as also. Even if you don't get scholarships though, I'll come back to that in a minute, but uh, so everything you need is, and I'm gonna uh, take you to these, a couple of these websites here in a minute. So we'll kind of skip over this, but um, you know, why would you wanna go um, on this? Well, study abroad, uh, there's been lots of studies done across the United States that show that students who study abroad get jobs quicker and at a higher rate when they do start looking for work. The experience of study abroad is highly sought after by employees because they know that students have gone on something that the average student doesn't get and they have a, a, an international experience. On top of that, we have an international experience that is service learning too. So that that's really looks good on a resume. So this is, uh, this is the groups that we've taken over the last five years. Um, this was our first group in 2015. And this is the group that we took last year. So these are different places. We, this is a near where a, a archeological dig that we get to go to. This is one near uh, a cultural site in Paros that is built from an old temple. It's, it's actually a kind of a, a fortress that was built about 1200 AD. Um, so anyway, those are just some of our groups. We have lots of fun when we go. Uh, we work hard and we play hard. Uh, and these are some of the students that have gone over the years and have had a good time. Um, there's a lot of really fun pictures in here. I always love, I don't know if you can see my cursor or not. Can you see that, Angela? 
Okay, so this is one of my favorite ones. This is Josh Patterson. One of the things you eat there is a lot of really good seafood. Uh, he has a little squid sticking out of his mouth, calamari. So uh, we do go sea kayaking. Uh, I have a, a friend who has a company and this is one of our sea kayaking trips. And um, this is some food from the steakhouse. It's what they call the, the place where we get a lot of the good food that, that our uh, family is our family owned restaurant. So you can just see there's a lot of people having fun. Again, we work hard, we play hard, uh, and we have a great time in the three weeks that we're there. So if you have questions about any of this, you can certainly email me. Uh, my, there's my email there, or Thomas Lewis, who is a video instructor too. Some of you guys may have him in the future. And um, one thing you find, and I like to take pictures of all these really beautiful doors uh, in Paros. So um, anyway, I have a couple other things. I'm going to stop this share right now. And let me share with you some things online. Okay, so I'm going to go to uh, Firefox here, and a couple things that I want to show you are, um, this is our website. Uh, it's the IUPUI School of Informatics website. Under undergraduate, there is a tab here that says study abroad, and this is where I'm at already. I'm already at study abroad page. This was our group from last year. This was at Delos, one of the most famous uh, archaeological sites in Greece and in the world. Uh, we took a day trip there. It was very hot, and uh, we uh, had a great day there, though. So this is uh, pretty much everything you need to know about our program to Greece and um, what we do there, how the classroom works, some of the things that we do. Uh, a few things that we have, if you're interested in this, is you might want to look at us on Facebook. All right, so I pulled up this Facebook site. And we have, one of the things we have people do every day is to take five pictures and upload those five pictures to Facebook and some descriptions of what we have. Uh, we have some craziness going on here with students and you'll find lots of pictures of sunsets and cats and all kinds of stuff. And, uh, but this is a really pl good place to go for everything that, that goes on here in, uh, in Greece and some of the work that we do and, and different students and just the different adventures that people have, you know, and at first people are like, I don't think I can upload five photos a day but you find that there's just so much to look at uh, every day that it's no problem. And you can see here, I think this was from Seamus. He got into taking pictures of all kinds of flowers. And I think by the time we left, he had taken pictures of maybe 200 different types of flowers. Okay. So um, that's our Facebook site. You might want to check that out at some point. We also have a blog here. Uh, let's see. I believe that's here. And so this is hosted through our, uh, our school. And uh, so it kind of re runs in reverse chronological or order, but you might want to check it out. One thing I did see, and this is from, uh, I was looking through these a little bit earlier. And one thing I found, this is from Nick Kinder, one of our students. And, uh, you know, he, he was saying that this has been a roller coaster and it's given you a lot to throw at and a lot of surprises. For one, he never expected to have eaten 18 arrows by this point in the trip, yet here I am bloated, but never better, you know? So uh, that's one thing that you find is that there's such good food there. You know, he didn't expect to eat that much, but uh, he certainly did. So, uh, so we have um, a blog from all five years. Every student is required to do uh, one or two blog uh, entries. And you can see here they all are. There's, there's uh, all the archives there. And, um, so everybody does at least one or two. I usually do one or two. I usually always do the last one. Uh, Thomas does a couple of them as well. Going back to this page too, uh, we have some information here that uh, typically when we go, uh, also we have some call out meetings uh, every fall that we um, talk about this. So keep this in mind uh, as you're getting closer to maybe being interested in this is that uh, we have these call out meetings. 
We also have links here to all the work that we've done. And I wanted to show you one of these. Uh, this is, um, let me get to my tab real quick. This is a work that we've done that is uh, a scan of a particular site. It's a church, uh, a monastery. And so we use a camera called a Matterport camera and we've scanned this church. And so this is what the, the outside or the, this is what's called a dollhouse view of the church. And now we'll go inside the church. What this allows us to do is to go in and and really see the church uh, and we can click on different places any any place that there's a little circle on the floor we can kind of navigate to and it gives us a really high quality view of the entire church I think this church was built around 1700 these are original frescoes this is up on a hill it's really quite spectacular I don't have any um, pictures of the outside of it here but this is uh, preserving the cultural heritage for the, the people of Greece. When we did this, uh, we went up there one afternoon and the women who were uh, kind of in charge of the church were so happy that we're there. They lit all these candles for us. They just made sure that no tourists were coming in. Uh, they really wanted us to see the beauty of their church and to recognize this so that we could show this to other people. So we have a number of different things here. You might want to check these out. There's a number of churches here. This, there's a mansion that we've done. There's a place that makes ceramics. And this, these have been really fun to, to be able to do. Also, we have a tab here that are videos that have been produced by the class. And these are all Vimeo sites. This is run through the IU or the School of Informatics uh, Vimeo site. And I think we have about 43 movies here. Now they're not all different because most of them, uh, we have an English version and then we have a Greek version too. And you can see that on this particular one, there's some Greek subtitles. So we have somebody before we leave that um, takes the movies and translate it. And then she sends me the translations and I put um, the subtitles on it. So these, you can, I would recommend going and checking out some of these. We're not going to take a look at these. And most of them are four or five minutes long. Some of them are class projects and some of them are individual projects. Like this one here is from Autumn Eastham last year who interviewed one of our talents that does our voiceovers while we're there. So every student works on a group project and then they also have a little interview that they need to find somebody that they can interview uh, a local resident. So this one's here is really interesting. Um, one of the people we know there was an Olympic snow skier for Greece. All right. And typically you don't think of Greece having Olympic snow skiers, but they do. And um, Sophia was, was one of these people and she did an interview with us. So there's about four pages of this that you might find interesting and uh, some really beautiful stuff and it gives you an idea of the kind of work that we do. All the work that we do is done there in three weeks, so it's, it's a lot of fun. Here's uh, some eligibility requirements, mainly keep your GPA up high, of course. Uh, we like to have a knowledge of digital storytelling, but that's not, uh, you know, we've taken people who have no knowledge of this uh, for people that we think will be a good fit for our program. Uh, again, here's the estimated cost and financial aid, uh, and these will change from year to year. So keep a, an eye on this. Um, when you're ready to apply, uh, there's a, a button here at the bottom of this and you say apply now, and it takes you to iAbroad, which is the portal through study abroad, which is, uh, I, I, study abroad is the IUPUI group that manages all international travel. And then when you say to apply, there'll be a button here. Like right now, there's no active, nothing active. But if we had this open, you'd be able to go in and put all your material in there and apply to our program. So that's basically uh, our program to Greece. The, um, like I said, we will be running this again in 2022. There's been a decision made that it won't be made, won't be run next spring. 
because of everything that's going on with the global pandemic, unfortunately. Uh, we're not unable to plan for all of the contingencies at this point that go into this. But uh, with you guys incoming freshmen, uh, certainly for 2022, you will be have, finishing your sophomore year. And then we can look forward to go ahead and getting you um, on board with us. So I think that's all I really have to talk about. You have, a few, you have a few questions in the chat. Okay. Um, Kaveen asked, how are the themes of the documentaries picked or chosen? How are the themes? That's a good question. Yeah. So we have a group of people on Paros that we work with. That's a community organization that runs through a group called Paros Web. And we work very closely with them. And I, I talk with them quite often. I actually talked with them a couple of weeks ago because they're not only colleagues, but they're friends of mine as well. And so every year we keep an ongoing discussion of what sorts of things they would like for us to uh, show that's important on the island. So a couple of years ago, we started doing things on agriculture because they have a very unique agricultural scene there. And last year we did some things on recycling because it's a small island. So everything that comes on the island needs to be recycled or put into the landfill, which they don't like to do because it's a small island. So there's a number of people that have different recycling programs that go on. The municipality does. Uh, and one of the things that they're doing too is to try to uh, reduce plastic and get rid of single use plastic, recycle that which they can't. And they also have a program which is called Aegean Rebreath, which is a marine organization that goes into the ocean and removes trash and uh, fishing nets and all kinds of stuff like that. So basically, uh, we work with the community there to identify the subjects and also the expertise on the island who can we can interview and give us uh, information on the the topics that we're working on. Great, thank you. Um, Quinton, I think you already answered where this is. He asked if, it, if, if we can see videos of students, what they've worked on um, in the past. Um, so that's all gonna be on our Vimeo site. Yes. Um, I wanted to ask you, because we have a few media arts students that are gonna have you as a faculty member. Um, so can you, can you just talk about your background a little bit and what you teach? Sure. Um, well, my background is, is widely varied. I have a degree in biology, um, and I worked at a, as a biologist at the medical school for many years. I also have a huge interest in uh, music, and I've played in rock and roll bands for 30 years. And um, I also like to do all kinds of art, so I paint and do photography. And uh, I got into 3D about 20 years ago. It's been over, it's been 21 years ago now, because when I was working at the medical school, I was doing all kinds of stuff with proteins. So similar to like what you see behind Angela right now, that's the stuff that, yeah, that's the stuff that I was interested in doing 21 years ago, visualizing, visualizing things like DNA and protein and cells like that. So then I started learning um, 3D and I got my master's degree in informatics. And then I got hired on to create all kinds of different pieces of content. And that led to doing things where we, um, you know, made all kinds of things, educational videos for students of all different ages. And then that led to doing things like 3D printing and scanning spaces with, uh, with the Matterport and with um, lasers and yeah. And then I eventually um, kind of got into this program of being able to take people to Greece and between myself and Thomas Lewis came up with the idea of doing these really cool documentaries and that's kind of where we are. So. I teach Intro to 3D, which is N243, which all students, I think, can find an interest in it, not just students that are really doing 3D. Certainly have lots of game, gaming students and film students that take the, those classes as well, because it gives you a really good overview 
of how to model, texture, animate, light, and use those assets uh, in games, uh, animation, films, motion graphics, um, VR, all those sorts of things. I also teach intermediate classes in modeling, texturing, and lighting, animation, uh, and I have an advanced class in VR, and then I co-teach a, a class with Zeb in the fall uh, for team production, and then, of course, to do capstone and, and independent studies as needed. So you guys will get to know Albert for sure. <laughs> yeah, and I look forward to seeing everybody. This sitting at home stuff, mm -hmm. I would much rather be in the classroom seeing everybody. But we have to do what we have to do right now. We'll get there. Yeah. All right. Uh, any other questions that you guys want to throw in the chat, do it now. Um, unfortunately, our student ambassador was having connection. It, um issues so he won't be able to make it so we're going to finish a little bit uh -huh. early well that's a bummer. yeah i know i know well, if you guys go ahead well, just let me tell you about chris it was chris yeah. that was going to come right yeah chris. it was chris yeah so i, I had chris in class uh, a couple of years ago and he did great and i really liked him and uh, and then he applied to the program and i was like oh great he's he's gonna you know it, it'll be great having a wonderful student like him along with us and he um he had some reservations about going and he wasn't sure if he was, you know, really if this is what he wanted to do and he had some anxiety about going and uh, almost the last day of the trip, he almost decided not to go. And another student, Nick Kinder just said, you've got it, you can do it. And uh, he went and he, he just was a rock star. He killed it on every program that everything that we asked him to do and he had so much fun and at the end of it he was just so happy that he got to go and you know and that he didn't back out at the last minute you know which we would have all hated to see but he uh he just had an incredible time and and sorry he couldn't be here today because i know he would have told you guys uh, some really good stories i think and i think he made lifelong friends with some students uh um, that they became really, really good friends with. And that's one thing that uh, is really cool about study abroad is that you're, we all live together for three weeks. You make some really good friends with your students. Um, and myself, uh, you know, I, I always become, have some really nice relationships with students that I don't get uh, otherwise in classrooms. I mean, I get nice relationships with students, but when we actually get to go to Greece and, and hang out together for three weeks, it's, it's really fun. And uh, after graduation, I still uh, am in contact with a lot of people. I just uh, contacted a couple students today about some individual projects that they might work on. And even while we're talking that two of them just texted me back. I just saw that. So uh, you, you make a lot of context. It's not a context. It's not just about going and taking a class. It's really an adventure. And I think Chris uh, epitomized that last year too, that he, you know, got so much more out of the class. And again, whether it's going to Greece with us or going on any other study abroad, I highly recommend that if you have the opportunity to do it. Also, I want to say whenever Chris is on ambassador panel, some of you three, you may have heard him, but he always says that, that this was his favorite class. So, Good. yeah, <laughs> and it's, if, it's hard not for it not to be. It's a, my favorite yeah. class to teach in year too. I'm sure. <laughs> um, and if either of you, if any of you would like to talk with Chris more on a one on one about his experience, if you're really thinking about doing this, we can set up a um, Zoom meeting with you all and him. Um, Kaveen has a question for you, Albert. He said this yeah. is more of a logistical question, but do people normally fly? Um, fly there via Athens? Yeah, so typically uh, you'll fly from, what we found to be the cheapest is if you fly from Chicago, you can get a cheaper flight to usually somewhere in Europe and then to Athens. And then those are on big, big, you know, 300 people flights. And then the, the flight from Athens to Paros is about 40 minutes it's on smaller planes, usually about 60 people. So it's not a real small plane. It's still kind of a, excuse me, a, a small turboprop. But uh, yeah, so 
most people fly there. It's easy to do. You don't have to leave the airport or anything. Usually we get there in the morning about, oh, let's say 9 or 10 a.m. And then the flight to Paros is somewhere around uh, noon or three, 3 in the afternoon. So it's kind of a long day to get there, but it's a nice flight. And the airport there in Paros is uh, nice and modern. And then the same thing going back, you can take an early morning flight, like a 7 a.m. flight. And then if you don't want to spend a couple of days in Athens, which we really recommend that people do, uh, you can go there in the morning and then catch your flight back to the States. Usually those leave about noon uh, on the same day. But we tell students that you should spend a couple of days in Athens. We don't do that as a group. We spend the whole time on Paros. But if you're going to go to Greece, you should see Athens, you should see the Parthenon, you should see some of the other things that are in the central part of Athens um, that are really, you know, amazing to see. All right. Well, I think that that, oh, okay. <laughs> but thank you. All you're right. Welcome. So we'll, um, we'll go ahead and wrap up today's webinar. Thank you so much, Albert, for sharing welcome. information. And you all know that you can find this on our YouTube and on our admitted student page. And we hope that um, you guys will join us next week. You'll get an email about that soon. Yep. So everybody enjoy the rest of your day. Okay. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye, guys. Thank you all.